Hey everybody, um, I am Gwendolyn Anello, your host. I'm with Drupalese Academy in Cocoa, Florida. And um, we're really happy that you're here to join us for Drupal Career Trailhead. Um, and we're super excited um, that you are going to uh, get the benefit of the expertise and insight of this amazing panel of Drupal people. So if you're wondering how to build a Drupal career, um, map out a new path, or even if you're wondering if Drupal is the right career for you, hopefully this session is going to give you some next steps by the time we're done. Our company is a training and consulting firm, um, but what we're most proud of is a 12-week Drupal career starter program, um, which past muster to earn State of Florida Department of Education license, and which has guided dozens of people on a fast track to a Drupal career. Um, we also just secured a license for our live online version of the program, um, which means the reach of our Drupal Easy training is now going worldwide, and we're super psyched about that, um, almost as psyched as we are about today. Uh, as our career programs have developed over the past four years, so have key relationships with amazing people and companies who, although they're not focused on Drupal talent development, they've really stepped up to help us with our mission to do that by offering mentorships, internships, and referrals for our graduates. This forum represents a few of those companies, um, and it's clear that they don't make it a secret that they want to build the Drupal CMS through excellent talent development. Um, and that's why we're all here today, and we thank all you guys for joining Drupal Easy here today. So what we're going to do today is start out with a C-level perspective on opportunities in Drupal and lead into a few living case studies that represent how different people um, with different starting points and experiences get to their success. Um, from there, we're going to give you insight on finding your way no matter what your background is um, and finish up with a panel of recruiters who represent four different companies from three continents who will tell you what they're looking for. We, of course, are going to leave plenty of time for questions. So Nancy Stango is going to lead us off today uh, with a Drupal jobs landscape. Uh, her impressive 20 years of technology, design, development, and marketing has brought her here as the founder and CEO of New Jersey-based Blink Reaction. She and her team's primary mission at DrupalCon is to recruit for dozens of positions. She launched Blink in 2006 with one employee building small business websites. Today, Blink delivers enterprise-scale websites to Fortune 100 clients with teams throughout the U.S., Europe, and South America using Drupal exclusively. Please help me welcome Nancy Stango, who will share her perspectives on the Drupal jobs landscape. I wanted to start out by uh, thanking uh, the Drupal Easy folks for putting this together today um, and, you know, giving all of us and, and, uh, and myself the opportunity to talk about something that uh, we're all very excited about, which is successful Drupal careers. Uh, we at Blink spend quite a bit of our, our energy and focus, um, as you'll see why in a little while, thinking about uh, Drupal careers and, and how to bring people on board successfully. Show of hands, who here is uh, looking for their first Drupal job? And not too many, actually. So others of you looking for new Drupal opportunities? Show of hands. Well, great. Well, um, uh, this is the place. We're going to talk a little bit about what the, the landscape of that looks like in the, the next 15 or 20 minutes. And... Uh, Put some perspective on, you know, why you want a Drupal job. Not just today, but what, you know, what is a Drupal job going to that you take today going to mean for you tomorrow, and you know, even ten years from now, um, and, and making those right decisions today. Um, and I'll I'll take a couple of minutes just to, to talk about a, a few tips, which I know our our panelists will will continue on more later. But first, uh, a warning. I don't know if you, you guys have seen our, the Blink shirts. Uh, on the back of our shirts, it says, resistance is futile. Everybody blinks. What, what we mean by that is that um, really, Drupal is a really strong force, and it's growing fast. And um, we all love what we do, and um, love is growing part of it. Um, so how fast it is Blink growing? How fast it, it is Drupal growing? 
Here's a, a picture of uh, the job growth at, at Blink. Uh, you know, I like to share a little bit of our, our case study and a story to take you through, um, you know, what our, our adventure has been, our journey has been at Blink, and, and how the job landscape has changed. Because I think as part of the story, you're going to hear about some very different jobs that we've, we've had at Blink along the way. And, you know, how as we've expanded and grown, um, you know, the different skills that, that we're looking for. Um, as you can see, we, uh, in, this is just looking at the last five years at Blink, uh, but back in uh, 2010, we had about 16 people. Today, uh, we have just about 85, a couple more, and um, we have some big goals for this year. Our goal is to get to a, a 120, so that's a, a big jump uh, for us ahead. So just to take you a little bit through our journey. So 2010 was a, a big pivot point for us. At this point, we had been doing uh, small business websites for a little while. And, um, but we were, you know, using a couple different CMSs, trying out a few things. Um, and, you know, one day we made the decision we were going to be all Drupal. And uh, this was actually a New Year's resolution. And I, I said, I came in and told my team of just a few people who are actually still working with us today. And I said, you know what? We're going to be Drupal only. A couple of people said, huh? But <laughs> now they don't think that anymore. Um, but, um, you know, in those days, the, the people we needed on the team, were, you know, we had some, a few developers. And, you know, we needed Swiss knives. I'm sure you guys all know, you know, what a Swiss knife is, somebody who can um, write code, talk to clients, do their own QA, maybe, you know, open Photoshop and move some things around and do a little bit of design too. Um, you know, that was the core of our team at, at the time. And it, it, it's changed, you know, quite a bit. So um, 2011 was our, our move into more of the, the mid-market clients after we had made this all Drupal decision um, and the acceleration started. Um, so we started to add some new job roles. Um, in order to enter into the mid-market, we needed uh, project managers and, and QA. We, you know, no longer were our devs doing, doing our QA and, you know, managing their schedules. Um, and, and this was really, you know, key at that point with, with the type of clients uh, that we had. Um, and it was also a, a key year because... Um, um, as we started to, you know, change our client base, um, we were one of the, the first um, Drupal shops who um, became um, the top level um, Acquia partners at the time. Now Acquia has over 800 partners. So it, it's been amazing really to see the, the ecosystem change and, you know, come to DrupalCon year over year and, you know, see, see the growth, see, you know, the, the, the changing atmosphere. So, um, you know, 2011 was our, our next step in the journey. 2011 was all about honing our, our enterprise skills. Um, and we, we started with, you know, this was the first time we did some mass migration. So this was an exciting year. We uh, migrated over 100 sites for Warner Music in a matter of months. And I can tell you those were some tight schedules and, and, and tight pressures. And the only way we were going to get through it, we actually had a, a very big penalty associated with the, the potential of being late. And there was no way we were going to be late. We're actually two days early. And, um, but in order to make that happen, we had to fine tune our, tune our process. We had to bring people on the team who really understood the enterprise. And, you know, if any of you have been through it, it's, it's very different dealing with an enterprise client than it is, you know, um, a small business client that have different needs and scheduling and just even how you communicate with them. But, you know, at this point, our, our team became, you know, laser focused on, um, on enterprise delivery excellence. And it, it became, you know, ingrained in our culture. 2013. Now, we had gotten to a point in 2013 where um, I know unlike a, a lot of the other shops that um, I, I had earlier focused on just having the, a team where I could, you know, reach them and touch them and know everybody was going to sit together and, and you know, in the office. Um, but, you know, we had gotten to a point where we needed to grow faster. And the only way to do that was 
you know, have supporting teleworking, um, opening up other offices, um, and, and becoming a, a more virtual team. Um, and, you know, part of that, we, we had to build out, again, new processes. We built out training programs so we could bring people on the team who were, you know, new, to, new or newer to Drupal and, and get them on board. Um, today, we have um, offices in, in two hemispheres and, and three continents, and, you know, we all work as, as an integrated team to, you know, deliver to our, our clients. Um, now... Back to today, well, long way, 2014. Long, long way from the dev who, uh, who could do it all. But we still have those guys on our team, as I said. There's, there's still, um, you know, a role for them. Um, but there's a lot of other roles, right? We're not looking, just looking for devs. Um, we, are, we have an executive team. I have a, a management team. We, um, we have a sales team. We have a recruiting team. We have a marketing team. Uh, you know, we have... Uh, accounting team so you know our the the job openings the the job recs that we're looking for um, you know are very diverse um, you know not just you know mid devs and and, and so forth um, so you know something I was uh, we were just talking about over here is um, you know when you start looking for folks of you know all these different skill levels whether it be you know sales or recruiting or marketing is very very different than um, looking for a developer or a creative so you, as you go through that you need to fine-tune your process as um, you know what you interview for and 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 how uh, people will fit into the team so um, you know, the, the story of, of Blink's growth is, you know, very much a, a story of, of Drupal, an open source story. I mean, there is a, a lot of people that I've seen here, you know, year over year who, who have, you know, similar stories as they've grown. Um, you know, maybe some not as fast, maybe, you know, maybe it's taken a little bit of time, but, you know, these are the things that we've seen in, in, in the Drupal space. And, I, you know, I think what's, what's really, you know, great about it is that, um, there, and, and one of the reasons why that day in 2010, um, I said, you know what, we're going to be Drupal, and, uh, and that's it. Um, and the thing that's great about Drupal is there is opportunity um, for small business websites, for, you know, mid-market. And um, it, it's been, the, you know, a, a, a very exciting adventure. So, um, you know, where's Drupal now? Where is it going? I think that we're it's still going strong. I mean, we all love to hear Dries every year talk about you know sort of the the state of Drupal, the state of the union, and you know we we can see the the, the futures are bright ahead of us. So um, so why do you want a Drupal job? Lots of reasons. Um, two really big reasons that you know we're we're all going to hear about a lot this week. Um, Drupal 8 and Symphony are. are just around the corner, and, and this is really, um, I, I think, a big breakout time. We're going to see um, job openings and many, many more jobs, um, you know, coming to be because, you know, as we saw when we went from six to seven, and um, you know, there, there's new migrations that come up and um, new features, new client interest, but also something a little bit special with, uh, with you know. The onset or the integration of, of Symphony is we're going to see uh, new skill needs and demands and opening up the market to you know bringing in uh, Symphony developers is also um, you know the object oriented platform which will um, I think you know and I don't know if any of you have heard this before but I have um, you know sometimes oh Drupal yeah PHP uh, it's not object oriented it's not cool. Uh, you know, and, and so we're going to see a change there and um, many more people uh, becoming interested in, in, in adopting it. So a little bit of uh, statistics about why you want a Drupal job. Um, the the um, market's growing twice as fast as, you know, other industries, other job types openings we see you know web developers software developers so um, you know definitely one of the, the, the faster growing industries um, 
looking at some statistics here. Uh, this, this is some recent data. So on um, Drupal.org, I'm trying to read this, it's 2,700 jobs. Um, on Indeed, Indeed, we've got 2,800 jobs from employers and 1,100 from recruiters. That's enough to employ just about everybody at DrupalCon. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I think um, there's many more opportunities um, than, than there are folks out there. So, um, so training, which you guys are doing, is, is, is a really key thing that, that um, is helping fuel uh, the growth. Um, also, some interesting top trends from, from Indeed. Um, if you look at top trends, you're not actually going to see any of the, the CMSs in there. But what you do see is some key skills that, that you're going to see across CMSs, across platforms, across the web. Things like HTML5 is number one you know, technology trend. Um, you know, other things, uh, jQuery, Pass, social media, those are things that that um, you know, in the Drupalverse, you're going to come across every day, and you know, great skills to have. So, um, why do you want a Drupal job? Well, there, there's, as we've talked about, there's opportunities in every space. You know, whether you know you want to do freelance, whether you want to work at a Fortune 500 company or small shop, or there's an opportunity. There's also opportunities for all different specialties. You're, if you're a, a creative person, front end, back end, uh, DevOps, and as I was saying before, even, you know, marketing, uh, accounting, you're, you know, and you, and you love Drupal, <laughs> you can uh, join in. Another really key thing um, is some of these positions are timeless. Remember before I said, why do you want a Drupal job today and, and, and maybe even for, for tomorrow? Um, I've been in the software industry for 20 years, which is good and bad. It means I'm old. But, uh, <laughs> but when I started, there was no web. And, um, but these types of positions, project managers, quality assurance, user experience, there were those positions 20 years ago, and you know, likely there'll be similar ones in you know 20 years from now. Um, so, very you know, very good opportunities to um, learn transferable skills. Um, Drupal skills are open source skills, um, and you know, open source is, is sharing. Uh, you learn communication skills. And, um, and learn how to, to uh, work with teams and, and share your knowledge and experience. And these are all great things to grow your career for a long time. And last but not least, uh, the salaries are pretty good. Um, national average, uh, 87000 And so that, that's across the country. And... I can tell you that in, in the major cities, you know, these salaries crawl way up into to the six figures as well. So, um, you know, not a bad job. So, a couple things I want to leave you with, and I know the panel is going to talk about this a little bit more, but a few little tips when you're looking for a job, um, some do's and don'ts. I think, you know, one of the most important things when you're out there looking is, is to really take some time and understand um, what's the right job for you. Um, you know, there's lots of different types of Drupal jobs working in lots of different industries and, and you know, size companies. Um, take a few minutes and reflect, you know, what are your values? Um, what do you really love? You know, will you like being a freelancer? Will you like working at home? You know, if you have to commute every day for an hour, even if you are getting that six-figure salary, are you going to be happy if every day you're getting in the car? You know, um, and these are important things for you to, to take some time and, and think about before you know you, you go on your your job interviews. And as I said, you know, the panel is going to talk about that a little bit more. But um, really, just want to leave you with that because I think it's it's one of the most important things to remember is is to, to do that analysis and know what. Uh, who you are and what you're looking for in your career. And uh, last but not least, uh, don'ts. Don't fake it. <laughs> uh, 
um, be honest when, when you're going on, on your job interviews. Uh, again, I, um, not sure you guys remember, depending on your age, anybody here remember Millie Vanilli? <laughs> Pretty boy rock stars. We hear that term a lot in, in Drupal, uh, you know, Drupal rock stars. But what's really a rock star? Um, you know, you can be a beginner in Drupal and really be a rock star as long as you're true to that. And, you know, that's the, the opportunity that, you, that you're taking. So, you know, be true to yourself. Um, you know, don't fake it till you make it. And, you know, find what's right for you. So thanks, everyone. Right. So just a reminder, resistance is futile. Everyone will adopt Drupal. <laughs> All right, thanks, Nancy. Um, so next, from this sort of forest-level perspective, we're going to put some boots on the ground and, and talk to um, a couple of different people who found success in different ways. Um, we're lucky to have today um, Gerardo Gonzalez, who is with Civic Actions, James Rutherford of Media Current, and uh, Mike Herschel of Lullabot. And uh, we hope that together their scenario is going to represent most Drupal professionals um, and that they can give you some tips on, on how you can move your, uh, your career forward. Um, I guess we'll start with Gerardo. So Gerardo represents all of you recent college grads out there that have discovered Drupal and decided it may be your thing. Um, he found his way into Drupal shortly after earning his master's in computer science, um, and his exposure to Drupal led him on the path that brought him to an engineering position at Civic Actions in 2013. So you want to... Hi. Awesome. Just making sure you're awake. So, uh, as you hear, my name is Gerardo, and I work for Civic Actions. Um, what's interesting specifically uh, about Civic Actions is that we try, well, the company started uh, working a lot with nonprofits, uh, so in the civic space. And now we're trying to move, move into the government space. So still trying to change the world in a different way, but always with that in mind. Um, and today, man, this, I want to see all the information at once. I don't want this fancy stuff. All right, there you go. So who am I? My, my name is Gerardo, and uh, you can find me in Drupal.org as fmizzle. Uh, and if you use Twitter, uh, I don't think... A lot of people do, but uh, I'm Merman GGC there. Uh, one of the things, uh, well, let's let's see. Are any of you have any of you graduated recently, or are planning to go to university for computer science? Okay, a couple. That's good because I was about to say like next. Uh, <laughs> none, of, <laughs> none of this stuff is relevant to you, uh, but um, so I, I really wanted to. Uh, uh, put a little bit of perspective now that I, I am deep into the Drupal world, what kind of lessons did I learn from my education and and how did that take me up until the point that I, that I am today? And so uh, I want to talk about whether education is relevant to a, to a Drupal career at all. So the, the first thing that I want to say about education is that it brings breadth of knowledge to any individual. So that, that's probably the, the first thing that you're pushed into is you've got to study humanities even if you're trying to be a computer scientist. You, you've got to study biological sciences. You've got to study mathematics. And how that's helpful is that it allows you to see the world from different perspectives. And that's always useful just to have that breadth and diversity. And the second thing that I find interesting about going, going to university and getting an education in that manner is that it also gives you breadth within the field that you're looking at. So uh, a lot of people that are web developers, you know, they are very knowledgeable in the stack. You know, they know about servers. They know about front end. They know about JavaScript. They know about back end. But at university, you also get to see a lot of other pieces of what computer science is about. So you get to see about operating systems and compilers and uh, some of the things that seem to s become trendy, uh, you know, like uh, UX experience, but these things have been around forever. Like interaction between humans and machines have been a problem 
that has been around forever, and you get to study those kind of things from a different perspective, a broader perspective than just web development when you're in university. So I, I found that that was very useful uh, when I got my first job. Um, but I also want to talk about me, my experience while in university. And I think that the most valuable part was that I got involved and I started trying to apply some of the things that I was learning by becoming part of a research team. So I, I, I got an opportunity as an undergraduate to go and do some research on artificial intelligence, machine learning, artificial life. And at that point is when things really started clicking. And a lot of these buzzwords that you just hear around really started to make sense, like why do I really need to have testing in my code? And then when you start working with a team, you realize that it is important that when you're collaborating that you're not stepping on each other's toes and that tests can really keep that level of quality across a, a team. The same thing with version control. It's hard to manage the same code between multiple people if you don't have a way to see what the changes are, whether the changes that were made are relevant. And so a lot of these different things that you hear about become more relevant when you're, when you're working in complex systems, when you're working in, in groups, and when you're trying to work with other, people, other people's code also. Because that's a, a complete different animal when you're trying to uh, utilize some, somebody else's code that is not well documented, that is not well tested. And then you also start seeing the perspective of bringing big systems together. And so I, I thought that was interesting that I was able to just go and start practicing from uh, the university this type of skill. So uh, my first advice for those people that are in university right now or that are planning on going is go ahead and get involved. Go ahead and try it out because that is the best, that is a playground. Once you get in the workforce, you're going to be a lot more restricted to try these things unless you have, you have no social life and you just have plenty of time to do it on the weekends. But while you're at university, that is encouraged. It is encouraged that you go and try these things out. So that's, that's the first thing. Uh, now, oh man, see, I had more stuff, but you guys didn't see it. Uh, ah, you didn't see that, did you? Okay. <laughs> um, so my first job with, was with, with a small media company with a very small team, and my education, as I mentioned, served me well, in which I knew a lot of these things that I, I was required to do, even though I have never done it professionally. So I, I did an iPhone app for them, and, and we had to do some user testing, and then I have to analyze the, 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 the user testing and uh, ch do changes to the code. And so all of these different skills, I had to learn PHP, Objective-C, how to manage databases, all of these things within the first year of my job without ever ha having to do it in a professional setting before or in university. I was trained in Java, and so all these things were new to me. But the fact that I had that training and that breadth allowed me to move fast and be able to be effective uh, in my first job. Um, so, so that was good. And then after uh, that first year, uh, that first year, my company decided that I was okay, that I wasn't a complete failure, <laughs> and that uh, it would be okay for them to keep me and try to help them with their websites. Uh, so that's when I started looking at Drupal. Um, so the way I learned Drupal might be uh, helpful to a few people. Uh, I learned everything first from a book, and uh, I have the title of the book there that was very helpful to me as a developer, Pro Drupal 7 for, develop, for Development. Uh, that just made everything click in my mind. And the other thing that was very helpful for me to learn Drupal is just using Drupal the wrong way. Uh, and the, the reason why that was helpful is that usually when you go to Drupal and treat it just as a CMS, you, you, you just get to do a lot of clicking and things happen and it's, and it's awesome. And that's the power of Drupal. But when I was trying to use it to create uh, uh, a set of management for payments and for users and for other things that are not generally CMS type stuff, then I got to, div, uh, to, to dive really deep into some of the subsystems like the menu system and the rendering system. And that just gave me a complete new perspective of the kind of things that I could do with Drupal and what I couldn't do with Drupal. And so it was very useful uh, to use it in the wrong way. And also uh, the only contributor module that I have out there, which is the Entity Construction Kit, was born from that experience of 
trying to use Drupal the wrong way, but it seems like that's the direction in which we're going, that we want Drupal to be able to do not only websites, but also any other kind of web applications. Uh, so it's, it's been great in that sense. Um, so I guess what I, what, the, the, what, what I want you to take away from my personal experience from my first job is that I was in this small shop, and so I didn't get a, a, a chance to really do a lot of the things that, uh, that a lot of the job descriptions re require. Like I, I wasn't an expert on testing, and I, I, we, I, really, I didn't really need to do like complex uh, staging uh, setups for deployment because it was just a small company. But I, I, once I discovered that I loved the web and that I figured that I wanted to stay within the web, I just put a focus on that and I say, okay, what is the next step from here? I am a small company, but I probably eventually want to go to a company that's gonna be, do, gonna be doing development 100%. What kind of skills do they require? What kind of technologies are they using? What kind of processes are they using? I noticed that a lot of the companies were using agile methodologies for their project management. So I kind of started diving into that as a team of one trying to manage myself in an agile way. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it just gave me a little bit of perspective on the kind of knowledge and the kind of space that those companies were working into uh, at, the inter at the enterprise level, just so that I didn't feel left out once I was gonna go to apply for the next level. So I think it's very important for you to keep your mind focused to where you wanna go and make sure that you apply that kind of knowledge of that next space to what you're doing right now, even if it's not required. And so the last thing that I, that I want to mention is that the best resume is to know stuff. As uh, it was mentioned already, do not fake it. Like, just push yourself out there, gain the knowledge, and then it's going to be easy. Like, uh, my, my, my interview process with Civic Actions was a couple of inter interviews across a month, and it was so straightforward, so simple. It was just like having a conversation here in DrupalCon with any other developer about Drupal, so it was just it was just a pleasure, and they enjoy who I was, I enjoy who they were, and it was just a, a click because I wasn't trying to fake anything. I just have been using the technology, and I knew what they wanted, and I have been trying to do what they wanted, uh, and it just happens. So um, that's the that's the only thing. Just don't fake it. Try it out. Do do the thing. Put yourself out there, and. Some of these other guys, I'm sure, are going to talk about the community, but I wanted to focus on what education brings to the table when it comes to Drupal. So uh, that's it for me. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Gerardo. Um, next is our experienced developer uh, who found Drupal well into his developer career. James Rutherford is the lead develop, uh, Drupal architect at Media Current. Um, and uh, he discovered Drupal about eight years ago and has built his Drupal career with a focus on migration, which served him well as he personally handled the migration of all the Georgia.gov data to Drupal. So here's James. That was a little bit of an exaggeration. There was a really big team that worked on that Georgia.gov project, but um, <laughs> yeah, I was part of that. So hi, I'm James. Can I see slides? Do you know how to get rid of the notes thing on there so you can see the slides? Sorry, guys. Are your notes in that? I don't have any notes because I just like to talk about myself. Slides are up here. Oh, they may not be up to the tab then. So. Technology. Yeah, yeah. It's on the screen. Oh, yeah, it shows you either see the slides or be able to advance them. Uh, I'd rather, I guess I need to advance them so yeah. they can work. Yeah, that's fine. This will work fine. All right, well, yeah, I'll put on the other one now. Can't you just keep presenting just for them? Oh, then we have to reset the whole. It's fine. Um, sorry. Is that? Yeah, I guess so. So that's where we are now? I'm going to do this a lot. <laughs> I have this little tiny icon down here. All right, yeah, so I'm James Rutherford. I am a lead Drupal architect at MediaCurrent. I've been um, 
working with Drupal for about eight years, and before that I had um, sort of a traditional graduate from school, work at uh, software companies, and then eventually became a Drupal professional. Uh, my projects include uh, Georgia.gov, what else did I put on here? And yeah, uh, I've been working on the Weather Channel project, which has been really interesting. Um, and I don't have a cool handle, I'm just James Rutherford on G.O and James Rutherford on Twitter. That's who I am. Um, so I think that was a great approach earlier. For the people that are in here right now, how many of you are uh, uh, software professionals that are currently working with Drupal but aren't like specifically you know, working at a Drupal shop? Yeah, that's a lot of you. So you're probably at the point in your career where you're working with Drupal daily um, and you're thinking, I like this technology, I might want to commit to this technology, is this the right time for me to make a jump and start you know, talking to shops and, and shift gears, right? Do I want to pour my time and effort and growing as a professional into Drupal? The answer is no. That's a terrible <laughs> idea. No, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's yes, you, sh you should. Um, let me give you a little bit more background about myself, if I can read my own slides. Um, I started off as a, as a technical as a geek, I guess, as a little kid, I got an Apple IIe when I was like a little tiny guy, and then got my first PC and ran a bulletin board service, uh, you know, dial up and all that. So I've always been interested in communication technologies, the web uh, early on, and it's uh, always been something that I was really passionate about. So I went to Georgia Southern University over there in Savannah and got into their new information technology degree, which was a slight um, aside from a traditional CS degree in that they focused on emerging web technologies and on media as well. And then from there, I graduated and uh, went to a, uh, I guess like a traditional software company, this company called Management Dynamics, and uh, they produced an uh, information system that tracked shipping rates. It was riveting work, really, <laughs> it was amazing. Um, but from there, um, I joined Georgia Public Broadcasting. At the time that I joined GPB, they had an in-house Java-based CMS. And I joined as a junior developer and worked under the, their lead there. And you know, we sort of maintained the CMS and added new features. And he went off, he left for greener pastures, and I became the lead there. And we started assessing our CMS and, and started looking at other solutions to move forward in the future. And as probably some of you in the audience have gone through, we, we did a selection process and eventually found Drupal. And uh, I led the migration to Drupal 5 at that point. And then we sort of like figured out all the things that we did wrong when we migrated to Drupal 5 because we did it ourselves. And um, that's when I really became enamored with Drupal, and specifically the Drupal community. We were able to find a ton of help on IRC and in the forums, and sort of you know, work with people to figure out what we should be doing. And so from there, we, we fixed our problems, and then um, I started really attending like local meetups. I went to the ADUG group a couple of times, started going to DrupalCons, as you guys are at DrupalCons now. And I started talking to people, and I really enjoyed meeting everybody. I mean, I think as far as software, groups go and as communities go, uh, Drupal people and professionals are passionate and they're fun and uh, you guys are going to get a lot of fun when Mike comes up mm -hmm. following me, he's going <laughs> to blow you away, but um, <laughs> the community aspect of it really drew me to it and that, that was where I was able to make that decision where I had met a few people, I had met the, uh, Dave Terry who's the owner of Media Current, who I work for now, and you know he would kind of fished like, hey, you know, I saw the new D6 site at GPB, it looks great, you know, you guys have done a lot of good work, are you looking? And I, know if I'm looking, you know, I'm stable, and then I ran into him again, and, um, you know, sorry, I'm getting kind of ahead of myself. I, I wasn't sure that I wanted to be a full-time Drupal dev, but um, by immersing myself in the technology and by going all in at the office that I was at and um, spending a lot of time in the community, the job kind of found me. You know, Dave was coming back around again and saying, you know, are you ready? Do you guys do you want to talk to us? Is this what you want to do? And uh, the decision kind of made itself for me. So, who am I? Now I'm going backwards, this is good. <laughs> yeah, all right, so well, I covered this a little bit. We uh, migrated from our legacy CMS to Drupal 5. Covered this, yeah. Active on D.O, and then I continued to grow as a professional, which I think is really important. We touched on that a little in, with our last speaker, is that you can't just decide that you do want to jump into Drupal. I mean, I, I wouldn't advise that to anybody. You need to not just join the community, but you need to understand the technology, immerse yourself in the technology. Absolutely your best resume is gonna be your contributions on D.O if you're brand new, um, or you know your GitHub account. Show that you have the chops to do it by contributing back to the community. And you'll uh, not only will you be able to use that on your resume, but you'll make friends and, and the connections that'll help you find the Drupal shop that fits the culture that you look for, the kind of person that you wanna be as a developer. Uh, 
Is that it? I'm done? All right, Mike's next. Um, <laughs> I'm not quite done, but um, yeah, so again, um, if, you're, if you're looking to make that jump, I, we talked about growing as a professional, but absolutely the best thing you need to do is just talk to everybody. Go to the booths, talk to, come by the media current booth, talk to our developers, talk to our leadership. Make as many connections as you can here, um, because not only is it important when you're selecting the firm that you want, you know, if you want to go full time as a Drupal list, um, it's important to get that job, but it's important to work with the right group of people. Different, cult, co different companies have different culture, and uh, you need to be able to fit into that to be successful. Otherwise, you might not like it, but it might not be that you're working with Drupal. It's just that you're not used to that, that culture. So, all right, thanks. Thanks, James. Um, next up uh, is Mike Herschel, who is our hobbyist turned pro Pathfinder. Um, he just recently joined Lullabot, I mean, like, I think a few weeks ago, right? Yeah, like four weeks ago. Yeah, um, as a back end developer. Um, Mike started as an IT manager and webmaster for a small construction company after he got his associate's degree. Um, and he got into Drupal as a pastime and eventually leveraged it to create a career out of his passion. Next up is Mike Herschel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm actually a front-end developer. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, no worries. <laughs> all right, so I was supposed to have a cowboy hat and boots and chaps and all that, but that didn't happen, so I apologize. Um, I know, it was, was going to be pretty pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> kind of disappointed myself. All right, so I, I started doing website development in 2001. I, I was using Macromedia Fireworks to draw everything, and then I would go to File, Export, HTML, and it would make these awesome table-based layouts with hot links and all that type of stuff. And I thought I, thought I, was, I was really awesome back then. And I ended up doing my brother's band websites and some other websites. And, you know, I, I, was, I, was, I was pretty cool, right? So I started doing... Uh, I started doing website, I started my own web development agency in 2004, concentrating on the up and coming real estate market because that was always going to go up. And, um, <laughs> and, and that was pretty cool for till about 2007 when, when that kind of crashed out. And I, I got into Drupal in 2008 and um, I was looking into different content management systems because I was going to make the best website on the internet. And I knew I hated Joomla, and I used to do a classic ASP. I hated that. So I did go ahead and make the best website right there. This is it. This is the best website on the entire Internet. <laughs> and and um, I, I initially did it in Drupal 5.3. Right now it's still running D6. But, but the reason I bring this up is because is I'm a big believer, and in, in the, the, the best way to learn is by doing, you know, by putting together – a decent sized website, you end up coming into challenges and having to solve those challenges. And that's the best way to learn. Um, there's a mantra out there called Just Build Websites. If you guys ever listen to the Shop Talk Show podcast, which is fantastic for front end developers, um, they have this audio clip in there that says, Just Build Websites, because that's how you learn, right? Um, so, how do you build websites? I was lucky. I had a job where I could bring this technology. I could bring Drupal into my work. But I migrated this evil collection of 4,000 static HTML files with ASV includes to Drupal. Um, and I, and we ha I did a couple subsites too. I uh, also did a good amount of freelancing work, which, which was awesome, you know? Um, so at that point in my career, I, I really, really loved the software, but that was about it. What, I re what really got me, got me out there was the Florida Drupal community. Um, so I attended, my first ever Florida Drupal camp was in 2000, like February 2010. So this is a picture of the uh, first Florida Drupal camp, and there I am right there. <laughs> like, it, it might not look like it, but I'm having a blast. I was like, I was like, this is awesome, you know? And um, so... And so this is in 2010. In 2012, I, I, I decided I'm going to start put, getting out there, meeting, meeting Mike, meeting everybody here, and kind of insert myself into this process. So, so, I, so in 2012, I helped out with marketing. In 2013, 
I, I really stepped up. I did the website. I did marketing and a bunch of other stuff. And then and last year, I also did a lot of stuff, too. I did the website, marketing, and a bunch of other really cool stuff. So what this really comes into is, like, putting yourself out there, right? And so what do I mean by putting yourself out there? Like, join your local meetup groups. You know, meet people. And, I mean, if you want to get jobs, if you want to get a sense of – if someone loves their job at Media Current, Lullabot, Blink Reaction, any, you know, talk to these people. Um, if you don't have a local meetup group, start your local meetup group. That makes you look cooler, right? I'm the, I'm the organizer of um, the Drupal and front-end developer groups in Gainesville, Florida. That doesn't mean I know anything. <laughs> but, 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 you know, that's, it's good. So uh, travel to regional meetups. Um, you know... I've, I've traveled to the Jacksonville meetup, haven't made it down to Orlando, I've been to Brevard. Just to get out and putting yourself out there is, is important and present. You know, get out there and put together a presentation on something, something that you're passionate about. And you don't have to really know about it because what you can do is you can, you know, commit to presenting on something and then it forces you to learn something. You know, it's, it's, it's awesome. Um, and participate in your camps and your conferences. And if, if, you're, if you don't want to do Drupal, there's like pl plenty of front-end stuff or PHP back-end stuff to, to do. Um, and like I said, present. Get, get yourself out there. Um, so here's, here's a secret. Most Drupal camps are hungry for presentations. They, they want you to submit presentations, and they want you to give these presentations. And so, like... I gave my first presentation, I think, in 2012. I gave two presentations that year at Florida Drupal Camp, and I was nervous as all hell, you know? But everybody's nervous. I'm nervous right now just being up here, but you do it over and over again, and, and you get used to it, you know? I had, um, I had a really good friend of mine. Uh, his name is Kyle, and he's not even a Drupal developer at our front-end meetup. So he's in front of a group of, like, 15 people, and I see him, like, kind of, like, shaking a little bit, you know? But... It's, it was his first time, and he's like, hey, could you tell I was nervous? I was like, no way, man, you were awesome, you know? <laughs> but it's, 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 it's good, you know? It's good to, to do that type of stuff. So another thing is, like, finding a niche. So, like, when I got into back, wait a minute, hold on. No flash. <laughs> That's a bad joke. Yeah, don't specialize in flash. <laughs> so, um... When I got into website development, I did everything, right? System, system administration, setup, development, uh, site building, all the front-end stuff, which, of course, right now. But what I'm trying to get to you is, like, find out what you love and do it. You know, like, I love the fusion of art and technology, and, and that's really what, kind of what attracted me to the front-end, you know? And, um, like, front-end development is also kind of undergoing, like, a little renaissance right now with, like, all the of the uh, MVC frameworks coming out, like Angular and Backbone and stuff like that. Um, so that's, that's me right there. So another thing is put your code out there, right? Get your code samples, and this is what James said, you know, get it up on D.O or on GitHub, um, and make sure, you're, make, sure you're, make sure it's interesting stuff, you know? Put something cool up there. It doesn't have to be, like, novel, but it has to be good, you know? Make sure your code samples are following, like, the, um, what is it? The uh, coding standards, yeah. And, sorry, what are, what are coding standards? <laughs> you know, you got, you, you got spaces and tabs, that's cool. Um, <laughs> but um, put, people will evaluate you. And, and, and when, when you have a potential employer looking for you, what are they going to do? They're going to Google you, right? So make sure you Google yourself. I mean, and they're going to find your GitHub account. They're going to find you on Drupal.org. And make yourself look good, you know, at least from their perspective. You don't actually have to look good. Right here. <laughs> um, so, so by the, you know, by the time I was looking for jobs, I, um, I can't see this. You know, I had my niche. I had my code samples. Some websites under my belt. I knew a lot about companies that I wanted to work for and companies that I didn't want to work for because I talked to people. And I just went for it. You just start applying, and, and people will talk to you. You know, the market is really hot right now. You guys are in an enviable uh, position. There are, there, like, there are a lot of careers in the country right now where it is tough to get jobs. We are so lucky. So I want to talk about why I come to these conferences right here, because these are awesome. 
So I like to learn what's new, like, like what's, what's new and exciting. I want to know how to pronounce it so I don't have to go like, say like, you know, and stuff like that. Because you can always Google it later, right? And then mainly I go to conferences to meet people. So this, I'm not in this picture, but I took the picture. This is at Florida Drupal Camp. It's just cool to meet people, to beca- become friends with people, to to learn from people. I, I, I love being I love walking into a room and just like knowing that there's ten more people in here that are way more intelligent than me and just like having that rub off on me. You know, I there are certain people I can hang out with and I I feel like my IQ raises, my, goes up a little bit, you know? And so in conclusion, today get out and talk with people. And make a list of companies that, 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 you, that you think are good fits. You know, go walk up and down the aisles. Talk to them. See what they do. Write down. You don't have to give your resume. Just say, hey, are you guys hiring? Because I'm evaluating you. You know, and, and, and write down the list and check out their website later and talk to them. Um, meet people at the social events. Give them your business card, right? Um, go to these parties. Uh, Lullabot is having a party on Wednesday night at the Handlebar on a rooftop. That's awesome. I guess that's cool, you know. Come to that. I want to see, like, all you guys there. Um, if you don't have business cards, there is an app for that. Lullabot just released this app. You don't need an app on your receiving ends. It just sends an email. It looks cool. So that's just, like, a quick plug. iPhone only. I, well, yeah. <laughs> And Lullabot is also hiring. We are hiring Drupal developers, front-end developers, I think pretty much everything out there. There's even an other category, too. If you don't see exactly what you do there, Lullabot is hiring. We're looking to grow just like all these other companies are looking to grow. So, yeah, so that's me. (laughs) All right, thanks, Mike. Um, Next up is uh, Career Waypoints, um, which we hope is going to be useful for aspiring developers, no matter what your background is. Um, Mike Anello has been developing Drupal sites for uh, more than seven years, um, and he specializes in module development, theming, and general site building, and recently joined the team of developers working on the Drupal 8 migrating core. Um, He's also the architect of the Drupal Career Starter Program, which I so enthusiastically told you about earlier. Um, And through that program, um, he's been helping people for the past four years uh, to get a fast track on a Drupal career. Um, He's had a lot of experience in working with a lot of the companies that are here and and setting up internships and mentorships. mentorships. Um, And uh, really glad to have Mike present the next portion. I just realized. I just realized as I'm sitting down there that I have to follow Herschel, which is not an enviable position. So, we're, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I was about to compliment you by saying that you know he's from Florida, like I'm from Florida, and no, you can't have him because we want him there. So, anyway, so um, you know, my name is Mike Canello. I am I'm passionate about Drupal, um, especially about Drupal training. I've been doing it for a while. Um, I actually have a little bit of a background in teaching. My degrees are actually in, um, engineering degrees. And as part of the deal for, to get my master's, I didn't have to pay for it, but I had to teach. And that's when I kind of got the bug. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about is career waypoints. And the way I look at this is I've been fortunate enough to be able to take four groups of people um, who could barely pronounce the word Drupal up to the point where they were were employable in a matter of 10 weeks. We've done this four times over the past four years, um, and some people have succeeded and some people haven't. And I think by experiencing that with these groups of people, I'm in a pretty good position to um, be able to talk about what qualities I see in people that um, help me identify who's going to succeed and who isn't going to succeed. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. Okay, so first of all, we're going to talk about um, is Drupal right for you? And here are a, a, a few of the keywords that I like to talk about. And I, I, I mention this normally right up front with a lot of our students. I talk about um, you really need to be self-motivated. And I think all of our, our living case studies you know, mention that. 
Um, Drupal is not something that's going to come find you. You're, you pretty much have to go out and find Drupal. You have to be the one that I want to learn this stuff because it's not easy and I've got to figure out what's going on. Um, you need to be a little bit disciplined. You know, a lot of Drupal jobs involve telecommuting or you know, being a bit independent. We've had people come through our class who were smart as a whip, very technically competent, but when it came time to actually perform in internships, um, they did not have the discipline to work from home or to follow up on tasks or to you know, be available when they were supposed to be available. And you know, It was shocking to us the first time or two that we saw it, but then we just realized that's a, a life skill that some people just haven't developed. Um, I think within a Drupal career, especially if you're telecommuting or consulting where you're not you know, working out of an office, it's something that's very important that you need to have. Um, you need to be organized, again, especially if you are contracting or especially if you are um, taking on little side jobs where you're, you know, the buck stops with you, so you have to know when things are due and what you've told clients and how much it's going to cost and keep track of your hours and all of those little you know, non-technical you know, tasks that help keep your business going. This one, I think, is, is probably my most favorite. Um, I think it's really important to be a little bit humble and to know that when you don't know something, you have to like not bang your head for 12 hours trying to figure it out, but you know, open up IRC or open up, um, uh, go to Drupal forums uh, if you're brave, or go to a meetup and ask. Admit that you don't know something because there are you know thousands, not exaggerating, thousands of people in this community who are willing to help. So you have to be brave enough to say, I can't figure this out. I know I should know this, but I don't know this. Can someone point me in the right direction? And more often than not, it's, you know, it's a two-minute explanation that will get you back on track. Um, again, and we've, we've had students who really technically super smart but get stuck, stuck on something. Um, and I, I see this every time we do this class or our, our long-form class where there's a homework assignment that should take – 60, 90 minutes, and I have students come back saying, oh, I spent all weekend on this because I couldn't figure out how to do X. And I'm like, I was on IRC all weekend. Why didn't you ask? You know, so you need to be humble. Um, you need to be able to ask for help when you need it. And then generosity. I think Mike touched on it really well. Um, you know, when you give back to the community, it's, you know, in one sense, it's a very, you know, nice thing to do. It helps the community. It's the kumbaya, link arms, and let's all do a dance. But <laughs> I, I'm going to show you in a few minutes, you know, it, it's, it's okay to be selfish. You are marketing yourself. You're promoting yourself. You're positioning yourself by doing all this. It's helping you, and that's okay. Um, so if you make the decision where you want to dive deep into Drupal and you want to, you know, build a Drupal uh, career, you know, you need to learn. And Gerardo mentioned that he used uh, Pro Drupal Development, which is a book that sits on my sh uh, bookshelf as well. Um, but there are other types of learning as well. Um, Self-paced would be, you know, reading books, watching, you know, the, the excellent build a module or Drupalize.me screencasts, um, going to camps or cons and sitting in on sessions and learning things here. Um, or, I mean, God forbid, reading Drupal.org documentation. How many people, when you first picked up Drupal, went to the documentation area and said, oh, well, here's some how to install Drupal. How many people read that? Really? Holy cow. That's, I, I didn't. I, you know. So I struggled through it. That's great. That's good to hear. I didn't expect that many. Um, or even the, the one thing that really hooked me and helped me a lot is I got addicted to Drupal Planet. So those of you who use an RSS reader or feed reader or even just go to drupal.org slash planet, this is a, a semi-curated list of blog posts that really, you know, take the pulse of the Drupal community any given day. Um, if you want to learn about what is kind of the happening thing in the Drupal community, what are new techniques or new modules or updates or things with core, reading Drupal Planet every day will, will you know, for me, it became addicting. Like, I felt if I missed it for a day or two, I'm like, oh, crap, I'm falling behind. Um, but that's really how I picked up a lot of momentum, was just reading that every day. Um, Instructor-led instructor training. Um, this is something that we specialize in. Um, again, there are trainings at um, a lot of Drupal camps, the days before Drupal cons. Uh, we do public online uh, live trainings. 
Um, there are all kinds of places you can get Drupal training. Um, you know, Acquis got a thriving uh, a, a training partner program with a training page that lists a, a schedule of upcoming trainings that are in person and virtual. So if uh, instructor-led training is something that suits you, definitely, um, you know, there's, there's options out there. Um, and I, I'm not going to pretend that everybody learns the same way. That's kind of something that I'm a firm believer in. That everybody learns differently. Some people, you know, learn best by reading a, a book. Some people learn best in a group environment. Um, some people learn best by having a one-on-one -on -one mentor to kind of that they could talk to one a week, or, you know, once a week and say, hey, here's what I'm doing. Am I kind of going in the right direction? And, you know, maybe they course correct a little bit. Um, the, the point is you really have to figure out what works for you because there are resources in the Drupal community for all of these ways to learn Drupal. Um, and then career training, again, which is something we specialize in, so I'm, I'm going to mention it. Um, you know, this is normally more of a holistic experience. It's, it's less about, or I shouldn't say less, it's um, not just focused on knowledge, but it's also focused on experience and community, which I think are the three keys to really developing a Drupal skills to the point where you are employable um, at, you know, by a Drupal shop or, or for a full-time Drupal job. Um, so what, time, what type of Drupal work is for you? I think most people um, uh, start off doing some type of side work, you know, consulting or contracting. Um, you know, normally decent pay, um, very flexible. You're usually telecommuting, but you know, not very stable. Um, Part-time work, again, great if you can get it, um, but you have to find the right situation, a little bit more stable. Uh, Full-time work, which I think is where a lot of people eventually want to get to. And I think in each of our three living case studies, each of them kind of demonstrated it's very difficult to go from, you know, not really knowing Drupal into a full-time position. That's normally something that you transition into. Um, and then entrepreneurship, where, you know, you want to learn Drupal, you want to get the skills because you want to start your own business that involves Drupal in some way. Um, and this is kind of the question I ask a lot of people when they're considering whether or not they want to, you know, dive into Drupal as far as going for a full-time position. It's, you know, this is one of the things that Drupal offers, is the ability to kind of control your own de destiny. Especially right now, or for the past few years, you know, shops are hungry for Drupal talent. You can, you know, if you get one job and it, it works out well, great. If after three or four months you find out it's not a good fit, either for technical or, cult or cultural reasons, that's fine, because right now it's a buyer, it's a seller's market, is that right? It's a seller's market, where the, yeah, we have the stuff to sell, our, our knowledge. Um, I don't talk that through for a second. Um, but right now it's a great time to control your own destiny and figure out what you want to do and build up your skills and then pick and choose and find what is the best fit for you. Um, and then also, you know, something that Mike touched on, wherever the mic leads, I think Mike, Mike had to go. Um, you, you can pick your niche. I mean, a lot of people start off being site builders. I can build a Drupal site. I can create content types and fields and, and add modules and configure stuff. But very quickly, I think you'll find, especially in full-time positions, and I think the, you know, the four recruiters can talk about this in a few minutes better than I can, is um, those are kind of generalists. And... I think most full-time Drupal developers have some type of um, specialty, whether it's front-end development or custom module development or SEO or project management or um, you know, information architecture or, or whatever it is. So luckily, again, there are so many opportunities in the Drupal community to kind of test drive niches. Um, a great place is you know, with um, contributions. If you want to, you know, figure out if front-end development is for you, then, you know, get involved with some base theme or get involved with Drupal core, um, you know, in the theming layer. If you want to figure out if data migration is for you, I mean, there's plenty of opportunities to figure out what you're most interested in. Um, and then you can bring that to, your ta to the table when you go start looking for jobs saying, hey, I know how to build Drupal sites, but I specialize in this. Um, Oh, I guess I already hit forward. So there's a great blog post. Uh, this is a couple years old or two or three years old uh, by Mosh um, about picking your niche uh, and 
Uh, it was a blog post about all the available niches, and some of them that, that were and still are wide open. And the ones he mentioned were site building, site design, theming, custom module development, project management, SEO, commerce, accessibility, data migration. Um, those are just the ones I, I wrote down. There's so many niches that are um, still wide open that if you can specialize in and bring that to the table, that can only help you. Um, so here's kind of where my, you know, my heart really is, is, you know, it's okay to leverage a Drupal community for yourself. It's okay to be selfish. That's kind of one of the reasons the community is here. Um, and I got ahead of myself, but you can learn your niche or learn your skills through in the community. Um, you don't have to, and I'm not going to pick on Gerardo here, but you don't have to sit there and just read a book. You can read that book, but then follow that up with contribution work or coming to camps and sitting on presentations and, and networking with people and joining a, a GDO group that is not geographic-based, but um, um, topic-based. Um, obviously, the networking, that's kind of, you know, I, I, I'm willing to say you know, half the people here at DrupalCon are here to network with other people, meet people that they only talk with on IRC meet with clients, find more developers, um, take advantage of it. Go to meetups, go to camps, go to cons, get on IRC, network, 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 because when it comes time for you to need something, for you to need a job or for you to need help, you've developed your network and you know, by attending these events it almost feels eff effortless, I feel. <clears throat> and then share, you know, position, again, I feel like Mike stole, or I stole Mike's presentation, but my slides were in first, so he stole mine. Since he's not here, I can say that. <laughs> um, but by all means, position yourself as an expert. You know, share what you know. Um, that's kind of one of the ways that I really got rolling with Drupal, is I started presenting at every meetup I could. Um, there were times in, you know, in Central Florida where I was presenting every other month on something. So I was positioning myself as an expert, even though I was kind of learning as I was going. So share what you know. If, if you don't like presenting, then write. You know, write a blog, apply to get it posted on Drupal Planet, and literally every blog post you put out there will be seen by thousands of Drupal developers. Um, and here's a, a actually a little funny story. I I started using PHP Storm a couple months ago. Um, and I figured out how to, you know, set up debugging a certain way to debug um, um, Drush commands on it. And I wrote, and it was a little bit tricky, so I wrote a little tiny blog post, you know, three or four paragraphs on a blog post. Um, and it was up there for about a month. And I got an email from a, a publisher, from a book publisher, saying, hey, we've seen your blog a bunch of times. We saw that you wrote a blog post on um, PHP Storm. Would you be interested in writing a book? I was like, slow down, first of all, but I mean, I, I am not a PHP Storm expert, There's n but, you know, by having been writing the, on the blog and by writing something about PHP Storm, I had, you know, unwittingly positioned myself as an expert with PHP Storm, which I had to kind of back away from and say, it sounds great, but <laughs> let me tell you. Um, and then again, you know, be a little selfish. Uh, allow yourself to use the community to further your career. It is okay. That's kind of the po one of the points of the community being here. Um, I know plenty of people who, ha who are hesitant to do it because they, they feel guilty about it, but, I'm, but it, it, it's really okay, and that's kind of one of the big messages I want to I get across. Um, and this is kind of my formula um, for when I see students come through um, people who are just really book smart are going to have kind of a hard time. People who have, you know, lots of experience but not necessarily experience doing things the right way are going to have a hard time. Um, people who are really active in the community, you know, it, if they're not that bright, or not, I shouldn't say not that bright, if they don't have a lot of experience or they don't go deep in any niches, they're still going to have a hard time, but it's not going to be as hard if you don't have the knowledge or the experience. A blend of all three, an equal blend, I think is what most people are probably looking for. Um, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> um, so definitely you don't want to, if, if you decide that you want to build a Drupal career and you want to you know, build up your knowledge or, or build up yourself to a point where you can go after a full-time job, be warned, don't focus just on knowledge. You know, get out there. Um, build a hobby site, build a site for a local nonprofit, just get some experience, 
build up your knowledge, and get involved in the community. Because I'm, I'm willing to bet that our four recruiters will say that they look at all three things, you know, maybe equally, maybe not, but we'll find out in a few minutes. Okay. Oh, that was my last slide. All right, very good. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right, great, thanks, Michael. Um, so we're gonna um, cap off this session um, with a, a, a panel of discussion of the principals and recruiters from some of the world's top Drupal shops. So let me start with Kim Pepper, who is co-founder and technical director of Previous Next in Australia. Um, Kim and his team work with high-profile clients, mainly in Sydney, Canberra, and Melbourne, that include the federal government, the government of New South Wales, as well as National Library of Australia, and the corporate site for Fremantle Media Australia. I thought this was cool. They produce TV shows like The X Factor and Australia's Got Talent. Um, so, um, Kim, if you want to join us up here. Um, we're, we're going over, crossing the pond now, um, to Steve Parks, who is a co-founder of Wonderkraut, a pan-European web consultancy group with 140 staff in nine countries. Um, Steve is also the managing director of the UK division that's called Wonder Root. Um, Wonder Kraut is the largest full service agency for Drupal CMS in Europe and serves some pretty well known brands and forward thinking governments like Germany, IKEA, Optima Bank, and Nokia Siemens Networks. Interesting thing about Steve, you're going to like to listen to him. He used to be a BBC radio reporter as well. So. <laughs> Um, Mike Minecki is Director of Technology and leads and coaches Austin-based Four Kitchens technical team. Four Kitchens 20 employees serve diverse clients including the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Time, NBC, Stanford, and The Economist. Um, they pride themselves as being and staying a small Drupal shop that does everything in-house. And then Eric Gaffin is the global manager of talent acquisition at Acquia, where he manages an international team of recruiters to staff Acquia's nine offices on three continents, all of which have openings right now, totaling about 80 positions across all disciplines. Acquia's rise on the global IT stage, along with the recently securing $50 million in finance.